Hello, everyone, and welcome to Awaken to Happiness Now. I'm your host, Shafali Burns. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Just going to make sure everything's working. Yes, everything is working great. So thank you for being here. I'm, I'm excited. I'm a little bit frazzled, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, this is my last day of packing, decluttering, all that wonderful stuff. So I have friends upstairs <laughs> who are doing that while I'm in the basement because it's really nice and cool down here. It's a hot one. But I'm so excited today because we have a brand new guest here on Awaken to Happiness Now, Angelica Rose. I met her a couple of months ago, and oh, she's just lovely. And I did some or a session with her, and it was like, wow, <laughs> it was it was amazing. It was so powerful, as well as receiving some messages that were so relevant and appropriate at the time. It's like, okay, good. I'm so glad she's coming on the show so she can share her gifts and talents with all of you. So Angelica Rose is going to be talking to us about freedom through activating the inner spirit. And uh, and really, more more importantly, is ego or inner spirit running your life, right? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to be doing a guided process, meditation, as well as receiving angel messages. So for those of you who may not know, Angelica Rose, she is an angel walk-in. She is a universal gifted angel messenger, medium, inner spirit activation specialist. I certified hypnotist and author of several ebooks, CDs, and DVDs to talk on spiritual oneness. And she also created an online series called Spiritual Journey from Human Consciousness to Spiritual Oneness. I'm excited to share, you know, her energy, her wisdom, her gifts and talents with you. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting, interesting conversation. So Angelica, welcome to the show. I think I'm going to tape you and just bring you around to introduce me. <laughs> you did such an amazing job. Aw, you thank you. didn't leave anything out. It was so beautiful. Thank you so much for my heart. And I just so adore your energy and your your way of being this and your commitment to this purpose that you're on. It's just such a pleasure to meet someone that has integrity with that. And I thank you from my heart for being who you are. Aw, thank you. You're so sweet. So, you know, a lot of people in in my community probably don't know you, right? So can you tell us, or your story, so can you share with us a little bit about your story, who you are, how you became, or like, what is an angel walk-in? Let's talk about that too, right? <laughs> so it's like, there's just so much for us to talk about. So would you, would you like to share that with us? Sure. I don't really talk too much about that, but I will share it just so people get a feel for who I am as as an angelic. Uh, mm-hmm. What what happens majority of the time is when when a person dies, they have a spirit inside of them that moves on and continues on to their next experience. And so the body dies and your spirit moves on, takes the wisdom that it's learned from this lifetime and takes it to other experiences, whether it's on the physical realm or on earth or it goes somewhere else. In the experience that I had in 1997, and it was documented by people that were with this body at the time, it was another expression inside the body, and we there was an intention that was set. All the windows were closed, and all of a sudden, the body started moving forward. It, I found out later on what that meant was the body was moving into a future time warp. The wind was blowing, and there was no windows open. The body collapsed. It temporarily died. The other expression moved on into into the ethers, and I dropped in, and we both said, what's going on? Even though on some level we had a pact on once it happened, we had no idea at the time what was going on. People were freaking out, putting crystals around the body because they noticed an energy that was different than what was going on. And they said, who are you? And I said, I'm, you know, I'm from the angelic realm, and I'm here to fulfill my purpose. And they noticed the energy had completely changed I've never been on this planet before so they had to give me a paper bag because it was like being birthed I couldn't breathe then I was put into a tub of water so it really kind of comically reminds me of somebody that's coming out of the womb you know coming into the water and then having you know being in that case a baby having to be smacked on the tushy or something to to breathe in my case thank god i wasn't smacked <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but i did feel smacked by the, by coming onto the planet on some level and uh that night they came 
my guides and the beings that I worked with came into my dream and instructed me on what was going on. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought they forgot the manual for how to live on this planet. I even <laughs> said out loud, where's the manual? I have no idea what I'm doing. And so I was really blessed initially with my angelic family instructing me. And then after that, I had these beautiful beings that are expansive, pure loving beings that have come and supported the awakening of the physical body to help me so that I can be in it more fully and completely with vibrational match. And it was a long process of transmuting, downloading, evolving, and moving the energy frequencies to more of a vibrational match for me to be in it. Wow. I don't think we've ever actually heard anybody talk about such an experience. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. When a body drops into the physical form, what happens is the cellular memories, if especially if it's from another expression, have to be shifted into a different vibratory energy frequency because the other expression was more earthbound. It's like you're born with the body, so you have earthbound beliefs and you have mm-hmm. earthbound energies. But as an angelic, I didn't come in from birth. I came in with the body having all these memories and cellulose and some of them were serving me and some of them were too dense Mm -hmm. and so those are the ones part of my purpose was to evolve those energies to a different frequency so that it aligns more with what I would call my angelic purpose or the inner spirit and to be able to acclimate it so that I have a stronger bond with the universe and with these beings and thereby support the human consciousness of others that are interested in being awakened to their own inner spirit, their own purpose, and their own connection. Beautiful. And, you know, obviously the, most of the people, most, I mean, I would say probably all, but, you know, <laughs> most people who are listening to this telesummit who are part of this community, they, that's what they want. They want to awaken to their inner spirit. They want to be able to be connected to spirit and live their purpose. Yes, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun when you start the process. A lot of times people unfortunately don't understand that when you wake up the parts that are what I call asleep or dormant because they're covered up in the unconscious with these energies that aren't serving, and I call them self-defeating beliefs that come across as energies because I read energy, so I talk the word energy rather than the actual belief itself. Mm-hmm. Most people get stuck in those beliefs because there's fears attached or insecurities or or limitation energies attached to it. And so as, as these the energy downloads are coming in from, and I don't do it, I work with these beings and they do it. I also create land grids, and if you want, I can talk about that. When I say I, by the way, it's not me solely. It's, it's this partnering that I have with these beings, the angelic realm, Christ, love, and universe. And that's part of why I'm here, to create these grids and to help support the awakening of the human consciousness. And so when you when you download these higher frequencies, there are human energies that are conflicting with it. And that's where the control, the ego comes in. It wants to hold on through resistance, through fears, through insecurities, through negativity, through limitation. It hooks onto it when it identifies with it as a form in the form of a belief. And so people get stuck in it, and it's almost like they're glued to it. When I work with the energies, there's no form. It's just energy. So there's no identification to what the belief is all about. And so as the energies start to get transmuted, if they're awakened enough to realize not to attach to that of which is being released, would rather focus on the energy of what is being downloaded, then the transmuting, the transforming, and the evolving becomes more of an organic But if they focus on that of which is being released, then they get stuck in it, and that's where it becomes more of a struggle and more of a challenge, more of a a feeling of how do I get rid of this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. we can. I think we can all relate (laughs) to that, unfortunately. You know, at some level, we can all relate to that, yeah. Totally, yeah. And that's where why this becomes more of a game after a while, because once you reach a certain vibratory I call it a vibratory line. We're we're living on the planet that's vibrations. And there's dense vibrations and then there are more 
a higher frequency or evolved vibrations once the body the emotions and and i separate them the mind the emotions and the body because even though you're coming together as a oneness some areas can have more denseness in it so once the vibrations of all three reach a certain what i call a level a line then it becomes a game because you're aware enough to see what's coming up and your attention is so awakened that you don't hook into it. Does it mean that you're not awakened if you still hook into it? Of course not. It just means there's more areas in those energies that need to be awakened. And it's nothing wrong with you. It's just that's part of what you're working on. And Mm -hmm. you have to be very gentle with yourself and very loving with yourself. And the more you're aware through embracing it rather than fearing it, the easier it becomes, and that's when it becomes more of a game. Hmm. And you know, it, it you know when you talk about it becoming more of a game, that also brings more play, more joy, more ease into our lives, exactly. doesn't it? Yeah, instead, because instead of that struggle and making it hard. Because the struggle and the beautiful words you just said, the struggle and the making it hard is the ego in control mode. Mm -hmm. And the ego's purpose in control mode is to fight, fight, and protect. That's its purpose. It's a program. Its purpose is to do that. Most people want to kill it off or hate it or judge it, which only brings a fire into a fireplace. It amplifies it and activates it even more. But when you hold it like a baby and you nurture it, it calms the, the energy down and the control down, and thereby you're able to move whatever it is, that stagnated energy, up and out. But when you resist it or hate it or fight it or or want to kill it off, you can't anyway because you'll die. It just amplifies that energy and makes you kind of like in quicksand go deeper in it. And again, that's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that becomes more of a struggle-oriented way of processing. And the way that I work with people is to get them to a point where they eventually move through it organically, where they don't move through the struggle, but rather through the organic It takes a process, depending upon where people's evolution is, Mm -hmm. to move from the struggle-oriented to the playground-oriented way. So is that what you mean about having freedom through activating the inner spirit? Is that that the the playground? Yes. Yes. Because once your energy reaches a certain vibration, it's free. It's Mm -hmm. free of the denser vibration, so it doesn't get sucked down as much. Whereas when it when it bounces back and forth between feeling free and then feeling stuck, it's because there's too many things in that energy of that particular area that needs more evolving, more transmuting. And most people are so hard on themselves, they think something's wrong, mm-hmm. which is natural and normal. It, what happens is then they get stuck in it more because they're beating themselves up on the insecurity energy and that keeps them stuck in that dense vibration. But once they realize that's part of an area that they're maturing or evolving and they're gentle with themselves, they move through it a lot quicker because they surrender the control and thereby there's more of a flow instead of a stuck feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to experience more and more is that flow, you know, and, and, uh, and that divine flow with, the communion with spirit. Yeah, because when you have that oneness connection rather than the duality of separation, which is where the ego is trying to get more Mm -hmm. involved, it's like you say, I want this oneness, and it's kind of a comedy that I do. It's like you can imagine yourself being in a car behind the wheel, and you go, okay, spirit, take over, and the spirit tries to take over. Oh, wait a minute. Let me tell you where I want to go. And you kind of kick spirit out of the seat and go, let me drive here. Okay, well, where am I going? I'm lost. Will you please do it? And then you go, well, let me just tell you where we should go and what I need and what I want. And then the spirit's like, okay, <laughs> when you're ready, let me know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's Absolutely. like you're having a split conversation, whereas when this is oneness, the spirit's fighting it, and your ego's like laying back with with this feeling of, okay, let me know what you want me to do next. And it's almost like there's this feeling of flowing. Does that mean you get lazy? No. It means that you're aligned and it's inspired action rather than reactive action. Yeah, and I think we're all we're all trying to get there, right? We're all trying to be in that flow so we can take inspired actions. But some of us, we're not, you know, we're getting stuck and we, we we're not getting those messages. <laughs> you know, we're we're getting them, but we're not receiving them. You know what I mean? So we can't take that right. inspired action. Yeah, and that's where you have to be gentle because sometimes it's about a lesson 
that's necessary to mature or it's about divine universal timing and or combination of both and that's where people go into doubting like it's something wrong and then that that doubt you know it, it, then it becomes a vicious circle doesn't it that doubt that fear that ego control and then how do you let go because you're you're stuck in that now again and it's like you're in a rat race trying to find out where the, where to run in the maze. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the cheese, the cheese is right in front of you the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So how how can we how can we connect with spirit more so that there is more ease, so, so that we are you know feeling more of that freedom? Well, there's a combination of a number of tools that I always like to use. You know, one of the biggest things is to recognize the most important thing is you're not the mind, you're not the emotions, and you're not the body. You experience it. Most people go through three different ways of living life. One is they're human attempting to have a spiritual experience. They're aware that they're spiritual attempting to have a human experience. My experience is that you're a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human form. When you're aware that you're a spirit having a spiritual experience in a human form, then there's more of that oneness and the ego isn't as active. And so hopefully that makes sense. So the way that you start moving more into that is that you have to be able to realize you're not the emotions, you're not the body, and you're not the thoughts. You experience them. So if you're having thoughts, and you're realizing you're not those thoughts, then you can identify with them as either something that's being transmuted or something that's aligning more with your inner spirit. What happens is a lot of times people look at all these experiences as conditions and they attach to them, whether they're positive or non-positive, they're addicted to the condition, which is a belief or an outside experience. And what is necessary is to shift that to an inner world sanctuary where there's unconditions, no conditions. Mm -hmm. It's to a point where you start moving your energy more inward and you take those energies and then you bring that out into the world. And so you're bringing, initially you're bringing your thoughts of gratitude instead of your thoughts of limitations. You're bringing your emotions of love through embracing instead of the emotions of insecurity and fear. And so there are various ways you get to that level of gratitude and you get to that level of emotion of embracing and love through meditation, through nature, through working on high vibrational music. You move your energy off of those frequencies that bring your energy down and you start moving your energy and aligning more with that of which will bring your energy up. So if you're around people that are very negative or uh, deflating your energy, you have to set healthy boundaries or, if you can, disassociate with it if it's dropping your energy too much and that's not serving your well-being. If you're in an environment and mm -hmm. you're constantly watching news or listening to things that are dropping your energy, you have to be willing to break that addictive pattern and start moving your energy into that of which moves your energy up, aligns your energy into more of a joy vibration, a love vibration. And there are various tools that, that support that, and that's where you have to start finding what serves you. Does nature serve you? Does taking a bath serve you? Does meditation? All these are examples of things that will help you to align more with that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Now, so we have lots of people with their hands raised, as well as lots of questions. <laughs> So did you want to do the meditation, the guided process first, and then we'll take some questions? I think the, I know from experience, the meditation puts people so out that it'd probably be a good idea to, to kind of move that as towards the end. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So how about we take some questions and see what, what's up with people and how you can support them? That'd be awesome. Okay, so we're going to go first, and I'm going to go try and go back and forth uh, as best I can. So we're going to first go to the phone lines, phone number ending in 9588. Um, 9588. Oh, unmute you. Hello? Hello? 
Hello. Hi. Who's Hello. This? Hi. Hi. This is this is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi. How are you? Good. Beautiful name. I love that name. <laughs> well, thank you. Where are you calling from, Amanda? What state are you calling from? Um, Illinois. Hi. Good old Chicago. <laughs> yeah. I suffer on the opposite side. <laughs> Three hours away. West. But anyway, I do have a question. Um, I. I wanted to see if you have any insight or something that you could share with me. I have a difficult time um, going on right now with uh, my job and uh, with finances. Okay, so when I go around, uh, I never go in people's energy field because that's too invasive, so I'm going above your energy field and um, I am seeing a lot. Did you have a lot of lessons with your with your family around that? Yes. Yeah, because I'm seeing that in your ancestral realm right now is that you're learning some lessons. You have a lot of ancestral energies in your energy field. So what I'm hearing from, you know, I, I tune into the angelics is is to ask the ancestral energies to move out of your energy field and more into the light. Um, that will help you free some of those hook-ins that's um, kind of putting you in this confused state of going up and down energetically. The other thing you have to be um, willing to do is look at your relationship with with how you um, look at money, not as so much as money as a piece of paper, but rather money as a form of energy and um, shift your energy beliefs around it because what you're doing on some level is looking at it as a form, not enoughness form. And instead of doing that, which is creating an energy block, if you look at it as an energy and then um, bring uh, the energy of love to that energy and allow that energy to flow by visualizing it more flowing in your life through a prosperity energy rather than a limitation energy. That will help un release some of the energies. What will happen as a result of you doing that is, is there will be a tendency to have some mental beliefs coming up around that. And so when that does happen, just embrace it and realize that that's part of releasing of some things that were stuck in your energy field, and that's a good thing. Okay. So um, to repeat it, uh, first tell the ancestral energies to move into the light. It doesn't mean that they don't stay around you. They're just in your energy field too much, and that's causing a lot of uh, denseness in your vibrational field because they're trying to learn through your energy. So if you ask them to move into the light, they'll be able to learn a lot uh, more efficiently it's a common thing that they do. They want to come into the physical realm and learn that way rather than learning it through the light. Uh, it's like they think they're going to learn more if they come into your energy field because crack yeah. up. Yeah, it's oh. funny. And then the second thing is to shift the form into more of an energy, and that'll help. It'll help you move that flow of the energy. With regard to your work, um, I, I don't know if you're around a lot of masculine energy. If it's, I'm not saying an actual physical masculine, but you just have a lot of masculine energy and these lessons around toughening your your energy up. You're giving your power away too much, and you're becoming way too insecure because of it. You need to reclaim your power and set healthier boundaries around it. It is a temporary experience that you're learning, but it is a very important lesson to help to strengthen your inner core around self-belief, self-love, and empowerment. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Wow. Thanks, Amanda. That was uh, that was so like, uh, Angelica. That was you know, like, her so, so so quick, and you know, I mean, she's called oh. in before, of course. Amanda has, but she's she is a regular. But I mean, just hearing you, the way you're speaking, it's it's so clear. Um, oh, thank you. You know what, what you're saying. So thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love talking to these beings. They, <laughs> the spirit guides of the people sometimes will communicate, and I, like I mentioned, I speak in energy, so it's really mm -hmm. easy for me to shift the energy into words, and uh, and then the angelics obviously is where I'm from, so that's even easier. But sometimes they send me pictures, and so it takes a little longer to shift it, the pictures into words. So it's mm. kind of fun. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Um, so can can you also uh, tune in to people when they submit a question on the Q and A? Um, I can play with that and see. I, I have to be honest; it's always more effective when they call in because of the fact that, especially because there's so many people, I may be picking up on 
on um on the questionnaires like other mm-hmm. people's energy where when I pick up on it we can play with it and see okay. I just would rather that they called in with a reading if they have yeah. a question about what I talked about then that's no biggie but as far as the reading yeah uh, until I get to know their energy it's always best that they call in Perfect. and that's where my integrity comes in okay um so I have a question from Jenny in Boston um and she says Traumatic experiences make me lose the connection with my inner spirit. And for a long time, I had a feeling to be out of my body. I have difficulty now to truly be in my body and feel calm, (laughs) serene, and secure. How can I bring harmony back in my life and being? That's so common. It's like when someone dies, they have a time being on the planet because they know what it feels like to be in the light. And all of a sudden, they're going back into a dense form, like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um know that that's very common and it's actually kind of comical because it's so common that I wouldn't be hard on yourself and look at it as something's wrong with you. What's happening, and this is what I'm hearing to tell you, is that it's actually a positive thing for you right now is your body's um, going through an explosive uh, um, purification. I don't know if you have a birthday that came up or is coming up, but I keep seeing a birthday. And so there's some energy that's going through your body that needs to be released and transmuted so your body can get lighter and uh, your emotions don't feel so heavy around it because, again, you're being too hard and thinking something's wrong with you. And so as you start moving this energy into alignment, it'll be easier for you to be in the body when you bring your energy inside, bring it in as a form of a spirit coming in the human form rather than a spirit having a human experience. That'll make it easier for you to recognize that you're in the body as a spirit still, not not getting attached or hooked into the humanness and all of a sudden identifying with it because you have a fear that you're going to lose your connection. And that fear is keeping you out of the body. And when you identify yourself as a body, you become asleep in that. So you have the gift of knowing that what it feels like to be out of the body, now bring your energy and recognize your energy as a spirit in the body and keep Mm -hmm. bringing that back and forth, go out, go back in, go out, go back in until it becomes awakened enough in the body to help recognize it rather than the ego trying to identify through a control mode. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go back to the phone lines here, and we're going to go to phone number ending in 9901. I guess I was able to read a question. Yeah, Yeah, you were. That's great. That's great. Hello? Hi. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a really bad connection. You, You might want to try and call back in or something. Hello? Yeah, I yeah, can, I can barely hear it. Yeah, we can barely hear you. It's not a good connection. You might want to try calling back in, okay? Or have her move to a different spot. Maybe she's calling on her cell phone. Can you hear me? Oh, that's better. Now, yeah, that's yeah better. she moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, thank you so much for taking me tonight, Paul. Um, I like to ask you, um, I like to ask for the, my direction. What's your name? Uh, What's your name? My name is calling from. Yes, I, I'm. My name is Naoko, and I'm calling from California. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. It helps me to 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 tune in more to the person's energy when I get their name and where they're calling from, so I don't talk talk about someone's dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I have to ask you for uh, the my direction where I'm headed to, also the finance. Okay, so um, can you be a little clearer when you say yeah, where you're specific? heading to? Do- yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to know right now. Actually, um, I I started my own business, my own service, and then um, but also at the same time, my finance is kind of short. But I like to keep just doing it, keep moving forward, no matter what it looks like on the surface. And I like to know that my spirit, my angels, um, and they, you know, their message. Oh, okay, so you started. How long have you been in the new business? Has it been under six months? I uh, know. Actually, I just I was guided to do that. Even I finally started taking action the last month, 
Mm. Oh, okay, so you just literally started the business. Okay, yeah. so I'm, I don't know why I keep seeing the three. Um, okay, so let me just kind of get a feel. So it's going to take a – if you just started, it's going to take a couple more months for things to start kicking off for whatever reason, the area that you're in. Um, I don't know if it's the physical area or the area of your work. It looks like it could be both is uh, causing some resistance. So something's resisting it. Could be the people. It could be the way you're approaching them. Uh, you have a lot of um, tenacity is what I'm hearing. So what you need to do is relax in that energy and yes. don't push. You're pushing too much, which is kind of having people feel like you're trying to sell them something rather than oh. educate them on the benefits of it. So mm -hmm. you need to relax your energy around it. It looks like, uh, I don't know if it's the way you're approaching them or what you're sharing, but it looks like it's it's a new way of doing something, like a paradigm shift. What, what is the business? Oh, actually, heating work. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so there's the paradigm shift. Yeah, be very, be very, because it felt, I saw light around them, like, what is she doing? Um, so the the reason why I was like, what is she doing is your ego is too much in the front. It's too, oh, yeah. you, you need to relax that a little bit more. Yes. And bring, and don't, and be gentle with yourself because you're, you're, you're deaf. When's your birthday? Did you just, it, I was seeing it like, uh, what, did you just have a birthday or something? In uh, March or something? No, my birthday was, is December. December in 18th. December. Yes. Okay, so maybe it's March of next year is when things really start picking up, which is not it's far, but it's not that far. You're definitely on the right path. I don't know why M oh. keeps coming up. Yeah, you're definitely on the right path. You're you're going through a learning curve. It took a lot of guts to do what you're doing, and mm -hmm. you're moving your energy from one vibration to another. What month and day? I mean, you said December. What day is it? At eighteenth, one eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, um, plus nine, nine plus the twenty-one to three. So you're in the three, which has to do with building your confidence, and you're moving into the four in December, which has to do with the balance of it all and bringing in um, a lot of the energies around it. So. You, once you start moving into the four, that's where the building and the finances start to really come about. Be very gentle with yourself because you're, what they're yes. telling me to tell you is you're on a learning curve. And with that learning curve, it's going to take a little time um, for you to acclimate that. Uh, you need to spread out a little bit more with where you're doing the energy work. You know, you may have to do a little driving around just to get people familiar oh, yes. with you just. But the big thing uh -huh. is you have to get your ego out of the way. Your ego is too yes. strong. And once you yes. do, once you relax a little bit more, uh, yes. you're gonna, you're gonna do extremely, uh, well. So just uh -huh. kind of meditate more, breathe more, yes. um, embrace more, love yes. more inside and, uh, be gentle with yourself because your commitment's totally there. I could see it. Your guys yes. are telling me you're there and you're, you just gotta, kind of flip that energy a little bit more, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, it makes sense. Yeah. And also, I like to say this one because, you know, when you guys started talking, when you guys started the show, actually your energy was helping me relax. Even I was almost passing out. <laughs> Thank you. That's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't Good. do a certified hypnotist on the phone because I do, I do, um, do like I'm certified as a hypnotist, so I, I attempt to bring yes. that energy of relaxation in. At, um, yes. Yeah, check out the website. So, um, Shafali will share that. Hopefully, it's on in there. It, there's um, there's some relaxation CDs that you can get, yes. and that that'll help bring your energy. And then, if you're interested in that online series special, that would really benefit you. Yes, and thank you so much because even the, my spirit was telling me to just let go and just relax because the more I relax, the more I get the more great inspiration. Exactly. <laughs> That's where your yes. ego becomes less yeah. active. And so I hope you were at the beginning of the conversation we were talking about when you let go of the control through uh -huh. relaxing it, your spirit comes more active. So you just confirmed it. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, congratulations. Good. You guys are so awesome. You guys are oh. so awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, my love. You are too. Oh, wonderful. Um, and, you know, 
she she said she was she felt like she was passing out and I I recognized a moment myself where it's like oh my goodness I'm so tired all of a sudden you know I'm <laughs> yawning and everything I was like oh my goodness what's going on here it's like I'm not really tired what you know so it was because you know of you and your energy and starting the call you know so totally oh, understand um all right um okay so ooh, next question we have uh okay so we're going to go to gloria in mexico um she has a question on the q a and she says can you um can you connect with her energy with her team um to allow her to connect and get answers she said all the programs and courses and healing have had little effect and so she is so ready to move forward. Yeah, you know, the, um, and this is what I'm hearing really strongly. Um, I don't know if you have a grandmother or someone on the other side, but or a mother on the other side, but there's a mothering energy that's coming through to tell me to tell you this, that you're too much in your head, um, mm-hmm. and that's why the programs and all these kinds of things are not working, because you're trying to figure out how to manipulate that you can't it's like your mind the human mind everybody's human mind is only using about 13 percent of its effective intelligence your spirit's mind is infinity so what you are doing is trying to educate the human mind to be more spiritual and that won't work for you what's important is to connect more with your spirit and learn how to bring that more into the activation. And that's where you're currently at right now is, is bringing the energy into alignment. So reading about it or studying a program um, per se is not going to work as much as aligning your energy will work. Mm-hmm. And finding if you're doing programs or you're doing any kind of uh, music or any kind of courses, find things that aligns your energy and wakes up that part of you that recognizes your your inner spirit more. That's what you need to look at rather than trying to educate the human mind to be more spiritual. Hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great question, Gloria. Thank you. Let us know how that uh, resonates with you and how that helps, okay? Um, so Marlene has an interesting uh, question or comment or feedback or story. So we're going to go to Marlene now, phone number ending in 5712, 5712. Yeah, hi. Um, hi. Can you hear? Yeah. Hey, um, all right. Well, first of all, I'll talk about birthdays. Mine's tomorrow. Ah, oh, happy, wow. birthday. What happy day early birthday. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting here what? laughing. Um, what state yeah, are you I calling did, from? Um, Florida. Okay, cool which I moved down here within a year ago. Um, Anyway, uh, I am wondering if, like, well, she probably sees what I wrote, but um, I have another another question. Um, Let me see. I would love to know if what I am feeling inside is correct about marrying this person. Oh, marrying thing. Well, you're moving into an 11. Wow. You're moving into your own mastery, um, your own individual mastery and so forth. So I could see the confusion between one and the other because your energy is shifting into your purpose. This this, uh, started, um, it will start tomorrow, but being that we're in the 21st, which is uh, the solar, what is that? Um, I'm not in my head. What is that culture? (laughs) Not the solar eclipse, but the um, summer well, summer solstice. Oh, the, the, the equinox? The, the, yeah, the, we're in the, we're the summer solstice 20. was last month, but we just had the full moon, the thunder moon. Oh, okay, okay. Well, there's some lots of energy coming. It's, isn't July 21st have a meaning? I keep seeing there's a meaning, so maybe it's the full moon. And in any case, um, there's a shifting going on with your energy. It, and this is what I'm hearing. It almost feels like you're playing a teacher role with with this partner. He's doesn't seem to be as as spiritually aligned as you are um and as a result of that your heart tends to close a little bit more so if you choose to stay in this relationship you have to stop being 
uh, the teacher of this relationship and rather be. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. And um, yeah. my second question for this um, day is, um, <clears throat> do you sense that, like, I had a crazy out-of-body experience years ago, but my daughter told me of it beforehand, and I was brought up to heaven <laughs> and carried up there by three angels. Um, wow, it was crazy. And then I was told some stuff and then said, you got to go back down there. Okay, so bang back into your body. <laughs> um, and then I'm surrounded by angels all the time, and I'm wondering, because you would probably know, um, if I am like an angelic being now or something because it's crazy. Well, um, if I can say lightly and lovingly, stop saying it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, because there was a gift that was given to you as a connection. I don't see your energy signature as an angelic, although you do have a connection with the angelics. Once you start moving into your mastery, there's a lot of uh, peeling away that's going on. And um, when you, I'm, I'm going along your timeline to see if that gift, whatever's going to come up, is going to start to become unraveled enough to tell me what your purpose with the angelics are. And I just keep seeing lots of unraveling as you get closer to December. Um, you do, I keep hearing healing. Do you do you know or are you aware that your hands have some kind of healing energy in them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Incredibly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, what's happening is they're going to be uh, you. You've made some kind of a, a relationship pact with staying on this planet instead of moving on. Um, I would love to know what they said when they took you up there because mm. I keep hearing it wasn't your time. Like you were given yep. instructions to help remember and then come back in to, to acclimate that and start moving its purpose more in. Um, your role is going to become apparent and it's different than what your role is with regard to um, to what it was prior to tomorrow is that you're going to be channeling energies through your hands to help those um, I don't know if it's going to be a physical healing, but it's definitely going to be a lot of emotional healing uh, with your hands. Um, I'm also seeing uh, doing some kind of writing or channeling with your hands. So that's going to be secondary. It's not your primary. There's a lot of heat that comes out of your hands. Do you work mm-hmm. uh, with elderly? Um, well, I did, and um, sometimes it I didn't even know when I was a teenager what was happening. I would just speak and, like, people that maybe had a stroke would go home. Um, my niece came out of a coma. Different things Yeah, so you're happened, proving you know? that's, the, that's the healing energy that's channeling through you. I could see it when you're talking. Um, mm. Some of it comes through your words. Uh, you're, yeah. you're helping. Uh, it, you're, part of your purpose is to work in the hospice because you're helping those transition and feel safe doing it. Um, I see a little resistance around that in your energy field, but it's definitely, once you become aware, it's almost like you had to be pulled out in order to be pulled into this energy realm that you're working on. And then um, (laughs) what I'm hearing from the angelics is resistance is futile. (laughs) Mm. So... um, it's almost like a part of you resisting it. It's such a beautiful gift to be able to support those when their time is appropriate. It's not you that's killing them. It's their time and you're helping them. And so if there's a part of you thinking that you did something wrong, um, you might as well just throw that in the garbage because you didn't do anything wrong. You're actually helping people transition, whether they get well or transition to move on. Um, in both cases, it's depending upon what their purpose is and your channeled purpose is to support that uh, both both realms, the moving on realm and the staying in the physical and getting healthy realm. And that's where your hands and your vo- your voice also has an energy that comes out. Again, that's secondary. Your hands are primary. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And then the hospice thing, um, yeah. My dad, last year, um, you know, hospice was called in, and I really wasn't, like, happy with their help at all. Um, And then my sister just died in December. 
and the same thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I wasn't no, happy with like them any, morphine. Yeah, just like the medical field as a whole has a lot of transitions that's going on. Uh, I don't... I don't know if they're going to put you in a, in a traditional hospital. I keep seeing the word no when I ask them. It feels like more of like these transitional homes where people, um, you know, have this transitional, I, I don't know what you call it, transitional places that they live. They almost seem like apartments, but they're transitional places. That That's a lot more enlightening for your energy field because you do have sensitivities and that will be healthier for your body rather than a traditional nursing home, per se, or a hospital, per se. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> yeah, because <laughs> I laid hands on people and they got well. <clears throat> yeah, so, you, so you're so you confirming what they're saying. Um, yeah. It's going to get stronger nope. in December. Um, okay. You just got to get out of the... Um, I don't know, there's some judgment energy around it. I, it's almost like your your ego is thinking something's wrong with this gift, and it's part of your purpose. And you're in you're in the eleven tomorrow, so your purpose is going to start acclimating and speeding up, and things are going to start becoming clearer for you as you get closer to December on what your next step is with regard to your 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 purpose. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be. A year. It'll be fun. My yeah. sister passed away. Yeah, December 1st. So, yeah. Hmm. I just don't, you know, I don't know. I don't like the way they were doing their stuff. It just, you so know. So maybe you'll do it differently. Well, yeah. Yeah, and that is and going to be something that you'll be trained energetically to help them because okay. judging them is not going to help you nor them because, remember, their consciousness is doing what their consciousness is doing, and that's all they know. Yeah, I know. I had to work on that <laughs> and walk out several times because it was Yeah, it's, it's natural me. because it was your sister, so, um, you know, I could totally understand compassionately your reasoning mm. behind it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I knew she was passing and all that, and she was okay with it. But it was just the way I was being treated there and uh, hmm, watching them morphine her overdose. I knew it was an overdose and I seen how quickly uh, after that overdose that they did to her, um, her, I just don't even want to say what happened after that and it wasn't mm-hmm. even hours. Mm-hmm. Wow. And she was gone. Well, God bless you on... on uh... Your courage My journey. to stand in your journey. Yeah. 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 Ah, oh, thank you, ladies, for this wonderful call because I mm-hmm. needed to hear from the angels because mm-hmm. you hear from them, but you don't, you know. <laughs> They're always there, right? Yeah, they are here. I sometimes they appear. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday tomorrow. It's also um, it's also my husband's birthday tomorrow. So. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's a special day. Yeah, and happy moving. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Um, All right, so let's see where we're at. Um, Yes, happy moving is right. Okay, so how are you doing, um, Angelica? Oh, I'm great. Let me just get some water. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So um, we're going to just quickly go to the Q&A. And I have a question from Amy in New York, and uh, she's just wondering, not just, but she's wondering, I wonder how to enhance the connection with my spirit. I have tendency to lose it and stress out easily. I have tendency to lose it in what? Uh, to, to, and, and get stressed out easily. Okay, and she's calling in from where? She's She submitted a question on the Q&A from New York. Oh, I felt the East Coast. That's funny. I should say it and see how accurate it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, okay, so that's that's kind of confirming what we talked about. I don't know if you heard the, um, and you can hear the replay because we've covered that energy, that conversation is that what happens is when you're releasing your attention and your focus is on that of which you're releasing. And so as a result of it, 
either a fear or insecurity or limitation gets hooked into that energy through a belief system through your mind analyzing, figuring it out or judging it and your emotions becoming unpleasant um, with that vibration and so you get stuck in it. Rather than doing that, it's like the funny example that I always like to use is when you take the trash out, do you look back, go into the bin, jump in it, smell it, take a cord to tie around Hmm. it and then come back out and carry it around with you or do you take the trash out, bless it and then go? Um, trash is not a judgment, by the way. It's just that's what we call it, trash. <laughs> mm-hmm. So in a sense, when you're transmuting a vibration or an energy, instead of looking at it, jumping in it, smelling it, touching it, analyzing it, tying a cord around it and dragging around with you like luggage, bless it, embrace it, free it, and celebrate the releasing of it. Look at it from a different paradigm. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. And that's something for all of us to, to do as well, yeah. you know, so it's not just for you, Amy. So, um, it's, yeah, totally for everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right. So we're going to go to the phone lines, go to, um, phone number ending 6470, 6470. So we'll be right. One oh, second. And, Hello. And please start with your name and where you're calling from when we do the phones. It always helps. Yeah. It's Claire in Portland, Oregon. Hey, an Oregonian. <laughs> I uh, have a question. I am. Um, I just turned 56 about a well, a couple of weeks ago, and I am not um, really satisfied with my job. I've been doing it for a very long time. I just wonder if there's any information that might be helpful that might come through that would, you know, help me look in a in a direction because I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Oh, what what day was it? July what? July 10. Okay, so um, it's funny. I'm trying to add with being out of my head. Uh, uh, seven, one is eight, and then nine, 17. So you moved into an eight. Okay, so you, you oh, it's funny. You're moving into business development. So you you were in spiritual <laughs> evolution, and now you, you moved into on your birthday um business development so it makes sense you're also in the year of three which has to do with strength so um, uh, there is a lot of shifting going on your paradigm shifting with regards it I am hearing you pretty much outgrew where you're at Um, there is a transitional time um, where you're going to be moving into something different you don't know yet where that is but Mm. it will become clear for you once you get into August um, I am kind of checking in to see. Are you? It feels like you're in traditional mainstream type of work. Is yes. that what you're doing? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know why. I'm just kind of seeing. And again, it could be a direct or indirect. Because sometimes when I see symbols, it's not always direct. Versus when they talk to me in energy, it is direct. So I don't know why I'm seeing lots of legal stuff. Is there something around legal stuff around it? No. Uh... It's but it's very um, detail oriented, so that could be part of it. Okay, what are you doing? I'm actually a travel agent. Thirty-seven. Oh, okay, years. so there's the yeah the legality of making the government you know with the, with that mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just kind of I keep hearing the word mundane. It's like your gifts aren't used um, at a level mm. that it could be used. I, I, again, this is what I'm hearing is I keep hearing a lot of management types of stuff, like you managing things, using more of your people skills. It almost feels like you're sitting behind a desk kind of a feeling, whereas um, your energy needs to be out more around people and um, more making a difference, more humanitarian stuff. Uh, your whole entire energy is being shifted into something completely, a totally different field and it takes time once a birthday hits for it to acclimate. But I keep seeing things with people and humanitarian, and it almost feels like like you're going to make a difference more. And it's not like like direct spiritual type of like healing, hands-on healing work. It's more of still working in the mainstream, but in a different capacity where you're going to really love to go in and and do it. It could even be in alignment with nonprofits because you have this ability to multitask. And when you're 
when you're doing one thing over and over and over again, it's not using the other gifts that you have. And you have a lot of quick skill um, ability of attaining things fast. And your heart is what needs to be utilized more instead of just the detail mental stuff that after a while gets boring. And so you're moving more where your heart and the emotional side of you and the creative side of you can be expressed more. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, and it gives me it really it's very exciting and it gives me great hope because what you just described is exactly the way I feel mundane sitting behind a desk, you know yeah just too mental your your creative juices are way beyond what what I am hearing, and this is coming from your spirit guides um the other stuff was coming from my the angelic family. And um, your spirit guides are telling me, and I would really stay very open because my heart's burning, and usually that's 100% accurate when that happens. Okay. It's just kind of scan. You're in the Portland area. I'm in Bend, so I'm very oh, familiar really? with Portland. Yeah, oh, cool. I used to live in the Portland area. That's why I said all in the Oregonian, because <laughs> um, I used to live in Beaverton, so I'm very oh, familiar. Yeah. yeah, and so here's what, and then Lake Oswego and Wilson, um, that whole area. There's a I'm lot in. of nonprofits. I would what I would encourage you to do is just on your free time uh-huh. sit down with a piece of paper and write down the kinds of things that bring out more of your creativity what what kinds of things do you love that bring out creativity and then find um like a pattern of some kind and then just start exploring nonprofits. I'm not saying you're going to go into that but because my heart went on fire there's something around that okay. and just kind of you know, check them out and see if there's anything there. Then then kind of see, based on what you wrote, if there's something that's an alignment job-wise, and you'll have to sell your skills to them, so you'll have to revamp your resume. Right, right. But you're definitely going to start getting clearer as you get into August, which is not that far away. No, it's so really what not. I would, Yeah, I would start doing that exercise now. Okay. Because it's going to be, bring out some of your creativity, and you will then be, say, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. You'll say, I know exactly what I want to feel like <laughs> when I'm grown up. <laughs> Thank you. And it'll be a totally different vibration. It'll bring you into that alive state, and it'll be very playful for you. I really, really appreciate that. Again, it makes me so hopeful. So thank you so much, both of you. And Oh, it's um, my I'm, pleasure. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Claire. I'm so glad. Um, all right. So <clears throat> hold on one second. All right. So Angelica, I want to talk, uh, take a few minutes to talk about the special offer that you have for our listeners. So for those of you who are on the live page, you can just click on special offer. Um, and the special offer, of course, will be on the replay page and the replay email. Um, and you put the website down, correct? You have yeah. a website, or do I really require it to give that? As well, well? It's, it's 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 once they click the special offer, it goes it goes straight there. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, there's there's two packages. There's package A, <laughs> and in package A, it's a two hundred dollar package for ninety seven dollars. It includes um, a book that I wrote called "Living Life as You Always Dream." The last call, you may like that one, mm-hmm. and it's in an <laughs> ebook format. It's um, electronic. And so it talks about ways in which to get you in alignment with your spirit and less with the human ego and controlling it. It also includes the four-part MP3 and an MP4 online series to activating your inner spirit and creating more of a oneness. And it also includes uh, meditation portions in that. So it shifts you from duality living to more of a oneness living and enjoying that life more. You get to choose any two articles on the on this website um, as also included that helps you to align more into what it is you want. And obviously, you're going to have to tell me which two you're interested in. And then um, package. And did you want me to go through the four parts of what this online series is about, or do you want me to let them? Um, no, they they can see that on on the on the website. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then package. B, which includes package A, um, also has um, it's it's a $285 package for $185 and includes the package A plus a 30-minute private activation energy alignment hypnosis session, and that's done via phone or Skype. And so it 
there, what I do is you go into a deep meditative state. I'm certified as a hypnotist, and your energy gets aligned. And I download these energies with these pure expansive beings. Since they can't physically see your body, I guide them into where your energy field is. And then they download the energies and, and awaken that part up. You can also do a longer session, a 45-minute or an hour, but that's a little extra, and that's on there for, as a choice if you feel like you want to also get readings. Because mm-hmm. if you do the 45 or the hour, then it, in, it includes some of the angel messages. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And, you know, I had a uh, a session with Angelica, um, the private activation energy alignment hypnosis session. Um, I had booked that with her and it was it was not anything that I've had before. It was really, um, really, really powerful. And, you know, she tells you, make sure you take a nap after. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You will take a nap after. There's no way that you won't. It was so powerful <laughs> and uh, shifted my energy, you know, uh, quite a bit. So, I, yeah, I really that's when you that. sold the house right after that. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was always fun when um, things like that happen and stuff. Sometimes people feel it right away, mm-hmm. um, like energy shifting. Other times it's very subtle. Um, so it depends on where people are at, and you get a follow-up um, after the um, a follow-up email with instructions as well after after uh, 48 or depending on what they say, 36 to 48 hours, you send me an email, and then I give instructions based on what they tell me if there are any. So that's also included in both packages and so mm-hmm. forth. Yep. Yep. Beautiful package. Thank you. Um, so now um, I didn't want to forget about the the meditation that you were going to take us through, Angelica, with your team. Okay. So um, so after that, we're done. Because I know it's going to be pretty powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never know what they're going to do until they actually do it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. And then, right, then we'll see so, if you know we'll see afterwards how we're feeling if there's time for more questions. Okay, that'd be great. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do is maybe get everybody to get ready for that. They require, um, you know, either laying down or sitting up and and getting ready. So do you want to take another question while people are getting ready? If they have to go to the bathroom or something like that, and then do the sure. meditation. It's a, it's a 10 minute meditation. So people may want to stretch for a second, go to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> so maybe we could take one quick question and then we'll go right into the meditation. Yeah. And um, um, hopefully that'll be enough time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. So we have uh, Gloria uh, in Cal- in Calgary. She says, can you tell me what my energy soul signature is all about? I am a healer. Or an artist, I'm confused. I love both, but for different reasons. Um, but they do not bring. Okay, in- so uh, with that question, I'm definitely here. She has to call in. It's um, that that kind of a question has a lot of complexities to it, and my integrity and and the spirit guys are saying call in. So when they say call in, that means they have to read the energy a little bit more, and yeah. I won't even go into conflict with that. Hmm. And, all right, so we'll we'll take another quick question. Um, phone number ending in eight three eight two eight three eight two. Hello. Oh, phone number. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. She probably um, went to the bathroom. <laughs> I know, I, I know, because but who knows? Okay, well, I tried. Um, phone number ending in eight three eight two. I oh, there she is. Hello. Hello. Did she go to the bathroom? Hi. Did you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Angelica, Lori, how you doing? Good. Great. Where state are you calling from? Louisiana. Mm. Hey, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I met some Louisianas the other day. They're such sweethearts. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome people here. Yeah, we're ready for the meditation after this question. I just got a confirmation, by the way. Okay. I want to know what you see in my energy field, if you can tell. Oh, that's too, uh, that's too long general. You have to be specific. A specific question. Yeah, I mean, to do a reading like that is going to take a lot longer than what we're, okay. we're, we're trying to do a quick question. Uh, I see orbs. I see different angels. Am I on the right path? On the right path for what? For helping people. 
Oh, that's a great question. Um, yes and no. The no is there's still some energies in your human energy field that are trying to dictate this, and that piece needs to get cleared away. Uh, your energy needs to be uh, raised a little bit more. Um, you're definitely on the track as far as seeing them. Now you just got to get your physical body energy aligned with it for you personally so that you also experience that energy um, um, inside of you more, uh, more nurturing, more efficiently inside of you, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah, so your energy needs to be raised inside more. Um, meditation, um, energy, uh, chakra energy alignment, those kinds of things would help you. Okay, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do the meditation now. And thank right. you so much for calling in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Um, okay. It's see. always nice when I hear people say they see things like that because the other day, I, twice this happened in the sky, in the clouds, they saw the word inscribed in the clouds, love, with angel wings on the left and right side of it. Oh. And so it, when I, and that happened twice. And in all the years I've never saw the word love, I see angels and hearts in the sky, not the word love written in the clouds. And so when I hear things like people saying I see auras and all that stuff, it's just, proves that they're so committed to being in love and mm-hmm. I just graciously say thank you for that. Yes. So I just somebody had a really quick question about um package A and package B. So package A is ninety seven dollars and then package B um is is one eighty five and that includes the package A plus a thirty minute activation yeah. session. Yeah. Exactly. So, because um, when you click on the PayPal button, for example, it, for package A, it'll say 97, and when you click on the one for um, package B, B, it'll say 185. Mm-hmm. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. And they can also get supplementary products if they go on that website and click on on the website, um, yeah. the product tab website, if they want to get the meditation mm-hmm. uh, CDs, MP3s, MP4s to help, and so forth. Wonderful. Yeah, so thank you for that question. Okay. And um, I'm being told to say one more thing. If you if you choose to get a um, MP3 in place of the ebook, that will be honored. Okay. So I could substitute the ebook if you're feeling called more to a CD or rather an MP3 um, over the ebook. Although the ebook is obviously going to support you, so I just want people to have that uh, option as well. Perfect. And you and, and they'll be able to email you if they have questions and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, they they when they go to that website there's a pro bunch of tabs on top. Um they don't, the clicking on the link will come to me and I'll know where it's go, coming from. So that part um when you give the instructions, you know, just just so you know, let me know which articles and if you yeah. want the MP three instead of the book, just let me know and and Perfect. so forth. So I recognize it. Wonderful. Great, thank you. Okay, so I think we're ready for the meditation, for the process. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'll make sure to list it on the website so in case people forget. Okay, so let's go ahead and just, um, you know, sometimes, uh, and again, a lot of times I I get told things right before meditation. So when your hands are on your lap or wherever they're resting, if you bring your hands down, uh, your palms down, the energy circulates within your body. If you bring your palms up, it circulates outside of your body. I am being instructed to bring your hands down into so you start to feel the inwardness of your inner sanctuary inside of you. So if you can uh, bring your hands and face it down on your lap instead of your palms up, and then you could either lie down or have your back straight and so forth. And Just go ahead and take some deep breaths and just notice if your breath is more in your stomach area or if it's more in your heart area. And just allow yourself to feel that energy of alignment as you're breathing all the way down. And as we do that, I ask that the angelic realm, Christ love, universal love, these pure, expansive, loving beings come closer now into the energy field of these callers, uh, this experience, as well as 
myself to help to Shafali to help to feel this nurturing loving energy that is being called in and experienced vibrationally and as you're breathing as you focus down in the base of your feet all the way up to your thighs I want you to just allow your breath to just to relax all those areas sometimes we like to use colors the color green is a relaxing color so Imagine the color green all the way into the base, entering into your feet and working its way up towards the ankles. Dropping your eyes down even further. Get your thoughts. If any thoughts come up, just let them float away on these imaginary clouds without any attention or focus on them. Allowing this beautiful light to work its way up towards the knees. And the calves, the knees, and the thighs. Noticing as you let go of any form of any control around how this light works its way up, you become deeper in the sense of letting go and relaxing even further. As you breathe all the way in, this light and the breath goes all the way into the pelvic area, the lower back, and the stomach area. As it works its way up towards the middle part of the stomach and the middle part of the back, it expands with this vibration of peacefulness. Breathing all the way in, just letting go of everything that's not in the present moment. As the light and the energy in your breath works its way up towards the heart, you notice that your heart becomes bigger than the body. This love that just pours inside as it becomes bigger than the room, as it becomes bigger than the planet, where this universal love, these pure beings, just download this energy of unconditional pure love that nurtures the humanness and allows it to feel so loved, so cared for, so protected in this vibration of love climbing you even further down into your body, into the whole entire experience of this meditation as the light and your focus and your energy works its way up towards the shoulders. They drop down with the letting go feeling. The energy focuses down the arms, down the elbows, down the forearms. Breathing in, letting go, the wrists, the hands and the fingers, all becoming so light, almost like a fluffy lightness, like a floating feeling. As you focus on the shoulders up towards the neck, the breath, the green light and the energy just soothes your throat working its way up towards the head area, the face, the breast, the eyes, the temples, the forehead, top, bottom, left, right, back in front of the head area, all just letting go. As your mind becomes bigger than the body, becomes bigger than the room, becomes bigger than the planet where there are no thoughts, just silence. And recalling this beautiful energy of love to just seep into the mind, bringing this energy of gratitude and just allowing the feeling of love to seep all the way in throughout parts of the mind as it stays very present in the moment. Going even deeper into the human mind, there's a sense of awakening to this beauty of love inside. As we work down into the heart, a nurturing heart, unconditional love. Into the body, the sense of beauty, the sense of nurturing, the sense of vitality, aliveness. Just allowing yourself to feel this embracing of this love inside.
the deeper your breath, the more relaxed and open and receptive to your love it becomes. Bring in the human mind back into the physical form of the body, feeling this gratitude inside or silence, staying very present in the moment. Bring in the heart, the human heart, into the physical heart, feeling this unconditional love, a nurturing love, a self love, a love for humanity, love for the animal kingdom and plant kingdom and planet and Bringing the physical body into the physical room and feeling your breath as you slowly come back into the room, very slowly, feeling your feet where they're resting. Breathing all the way in, slowly coming back, feeling your body where it's sitting or lying down. Coming all the way into the room, feeling your hands and the fingers. And keeping your eyes closed, slowly coming back into the present room, aware of your surroundings, aware of this energy of love inside, this sense of joyfulness and vitality. And keeping your eyes closed just for a minute or two as you become aware of what's going on inside of you. What does the word or feeling inside your inner sanctuary tell you at this very present moment? And embrace that. Noticing your breath as you slowly come into the room. Feeling the energy of love all around you. The energy of joy all around you. The energy of vitality all around you. Peace, prosperity, self. And vitality. What time is? When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Oh, that was lovely, Angelica. 
Really, it was a dove really singing nice. to me. It was so cute. It was singing to us all, actually, not just. It was so cool. It's like it came in right at the meditation. Yeah, that was beautiful. I love Thank that. you. Thank you. Oh, it was my pleasure. It's just a sampling. I didn't do the activation because, as I mentioned, it was more important to do the energy of love, which is an activation in itself. Mhm. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, and so of course now that we're in this energy, you know, it'd be nice to stay in this energy for a little while longer. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Very calming. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, I was just going to ask you, did you have any last words of wisdom for our our listeners today, Angelica? Before we um, set off, it'd be nice to see what people said on the on the computer. The biggest thing is. You know, this is the year of transformation. This mm-hmm. is the year of flipping. Uh, many, many people are moving through that haven't done a lot of the inner work and haven't done this spiritual path are really moving through a lot of vibrational shifting, a lot of resistance, a lot of reactive energies. And those that have done their inner work have to learn to rise above that and send it that energy with compassion rather than fear or judgment or insecurities or negativities or anything like that. Because this is the flipping year where your spirit starts to become more active. And those that haven't done their inner work are really resisting it or having a hard time. And so if you raise your energy above that vibration, it won't pull you down and you won't feel so sucked into it. If you're able to come from compassion and embracing it, it'll be more gentle to you. Mm -hmm. So that'll help you to be able to support others without feeling like you have to fix, correct, or teach them would rather be the loving energy and allow them to learn on their own. Mm. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Be the loving energy, you know, that, that is, yeah. that is the, uh, <laughs> that is the mantra for right now. Be the loving energy for yourself and for others, you know, just be. Um, exactly. Yeah, no, thank you. That's beautiful. And that's, and that's so relevant right now because I know a lot of people are going through a transition and changes and, so on. So just be the loving energy, especially for yourself. We tend to judge ourselves so harshly. So thank you. And I want to thank uh, thank you for the, this beautiful uh, meditation and just all of the wonderful readings that you did for everyone. You know, they were so spot on. And um, oh, thank you. I think they really resonated with everyone. I want to you know thank the callers and listeners for being here as well for co-creating this space. And I'm sure you all also felt this you know, strong, powerful energy. And that's why, um, you know, this was so different and and I knew it would be. So I'm so glad that Angelica, you were here to share your wisdom, your energy, your teachings with, uh, with all of us. So, um, beautiful, beautiful call. Thank you. My pleasure. It was was so much fun to meet all these wonderful people. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So, um, thank you everyone. Today is Thursday. So, um, have a great weekend. (laughs) And next time I talk to you, it'll be from Vienna. So I think next call is later next week. (laughs) So I'll be calling in from there. Um, so blessings, everyone. I love you and continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. And we will talk again soon. Thank you so much, Angelica. Happy travel. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.